All right, I'm going to share with you tonight, uh, this evening about deeper by prioritizing time with God. Okay, this is my theme uh, for this evening. Uh, we are still talking about radical resilience, that we need to really be strong in the last days. We need to we have resilience, uh, steadfastness, but it has to do with a radical lifestyle, a radical resilience. And the theme is deep calls to deep. God is calling us to go deeper and deeper in the things of God. All right? I don't know about you. The, the, the situation in the world is getting more and more dangerous. Don't you, don't you, don't you sense that when you see the news? Uh, do you see news? Read uh, CNN news or BBC news? <laughs> Oh, the latest is this, this, uh, this Jordan, the, the, the army came and killed three Americans, killed them, and now uh, Joe Biden has retaliated and sent about 85 uh, places to bomb all over, okay? So the tension in the Middle East is very, 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 very dangerous because we're in the brink of a possible Third World War. I just feel it. Uh, it says every time you hear the news about Gaza, you hear about Syria and Iraq, and behind the scene, they call it the proxy war is Iran. Uh, Iran is filled with nuclear warfare, North Korea, uh, and of course, many of these nuclear countries, they are just in the brink of possibility. If somebody come and trigger something, we're going to have all kinds of problems in the world. We are so dangerous. I just saw uh, a news yesterday about Japan. Now, Japan is, is, uh, is the, one of, the, one of the, the, the survival of the, what do you call that, Hiroshima, the bomb. She said, we should never, never have any nuclear warfare. And right now, we're in the brink of nuclear warfare. Right? And we're so dangerous. If anybody can start a third world war, we are all into it. So we need uh, a faith in the Lord in the last days, okay? Uh, we talk about what is deep spirituality and three things. I just want to recap. What is deep spirituality? We, we want to uh, have a walk with God deeply. Deep spirituality, all right? Has, has to do with relationship with God. Okay? It has, is rooted in our relationship. Where it's a personal relationship. Uh, is, is drawing close to God. It is sitting at the feet of Jesus. Is wanting to know God. So it has to do with your personal relationship with God. In a sense, nobody can do it for you. All right, you can come to church, but finally, you need to sit at the feet of Jesus and draw closer to the Lord. Right? It's, it's a personal relationship with God. Number two, it has to do with transformation of our heart. Okay, at the end of the day, it's our heart transformation. Not what we know, uh, how, many, how much knowledge we have, but our heart, whether we are transformed in our heart. All right? And thirdly, it has to do with consistent spiritual growth. We must always be growing spiritually. We must always be hungering and thirsting after God. All right, so this is where we start for the past couple of weeks. Uh, I think we may have seen this illustration, I think I have shared before, about Big Rock Experiment, where we have to prioritize our life. Okay, our life is here with rocks, pebbles, and sand. All right? I talk about how to put this sand, rock, pebble into this jar. Okay, so this experiment will be about one minute. You can see this experiment uh, from this video. Clip. There's a well-known story about a university professor that wanted to make a point about the importance of prioritizing how we spend our time. The professor stood in front of his class with a display of items. He took a large empty jar and filled it with rocks, approximately two inches in diameter. He then asked the class if the jar was full and they agreed, yes, the jar was full. The professor then took a box of pebbles and added them to the jar and gave it a little shake to move the pebbles into the open areas around the rocks. The professor asked the class again if the jar was full. They agreed, yes, it is full this time. The professor then took a box of sand and added it to the jar, filling the spaces between the rocks and the pebbles. He asked again, now, is the jar full? They laughed and agreed, yes, it's full. This jar represents your life. The big rocks signify the really important things in your life, 
such as health, family, and friends. The pebbles are the other things that matter in your life, such as work or school. And the sand signifies the remaining small stuff, such as material possessions. Now, if you were to reverse the order of filling the jar and add the sand first, there would not be enough room for the rocks and the pebbles. The same principle applies to your life. If you spend too much time on the small stuff, you won't have enough space or time to focus on the things that are truly important, the big rocks. So, prioritize the big rocks first. Practice self-care, spend quality time with the people you love, and the rest is just pebbles and sand. They will always find some space. to talk to you about prioritizing our time with God, the big rocks, all right? So we know in this, this, this illustration, uh, the big rocks are the essential things, okay? So it's very important we put in the big rocks in our life, things are essential. The pebbles are the less essential, not so important, all right? But the sand are the least. They are urgent things they take our time and very often they are the distractions okay so this experiment is very important uh, if you don't put the big rocks in first they won't fit in later so the big rocks must go into the jar first right if the sand comes in or the pebble comes in the big rock cannot go inside all right and you need to schedule the important thing first then you fill the remaining gaps with less importance. So the big rocks are the important things in our life. Okay, very crucial. So what are the big rocks? I'm suggesting to you a couple of things that are important. Faith, right? Family, yeah, right? They increase marriage and children. Then fitness, our health, and then the rest, food and finances. Now I'm, I'm going to concentrate on that faith tonight. Uh, the most important thing in our life, the biggest rock <laughs> is our faith. The rock is Jesus, right? We must have the biggest rock in our life. The most important rock we could have put in the jar is our faith in the Lord. Of course, of course pebbles, our friends, those who are working, our schooling, etc. They are the less, less important, although it's important as well. And of course, the same. Maybe social media, maybe our hobbies, maybe our material possessions. So, so we don't mix up the sand in our life, take all our time and energy, then we don't have the big rocks. All right, so this is what is essential for us. How do you prioritize our personal relationship with God? That's the crux of our message today. How, how can we put the, the most important thing in our life? All right, our relationship with God. So, first of all, you need to shift your point of gravity. All right? Our center of gravity in our life is very important. You, to, you, you must know where, where the center of our life is. And number two, uh, I'll talk about the story of Martha and Mary that give us a very powerful story. And then thirdly, then we need to schedule time for prayer and reflection. Those are three things I want to leave with you tonight. All right? First of all, we need to shift our point of gravity. All right? The, cent the, the center of gravity of the human body, where is it? It's somewhere in the center, huh? The center of the human body. Okay, we need that. Uh, the center of gravity must be firm. It must be uh, stable, all right? Uh, it, the, the center of gravity, well, in the center, all right? You can, it's balanced. Uh, I want to see how fit you are this morning, tonight. Can we all stand? See whether we are strong, fit. Uh, Let's do some exercise, stretching. Hey, what happened? <clears throat> All right, uh, stretch our hand. Over <laughs> here. Okay, now our legs. Can? Can balance? Where's the center of gravity? Now, 
Can you stand? <laughs> okay, try the other leg. Up. Up. Up around. This way. Ah, okay. All right. <laughs> the idea of, of whether we have the balance, huh? whether we have the balance. Okay, can sit down already. <laughs> Uh, almost every day, every time we go for our exercises, this is like a stretching only. Yeah? We stretch here, we do our lunges, uh, we do our balance. So the, the, the center of gravity is where we balance. Okay? It's very important, our center of gravity of our body. Okay? So the first thing in our relationship with God, we must make sure we shift the point of gravity. The center of gravity is crucial. We must know our center of gravity. All right? Uh, it is a balance point in your body. And, and Jesus, when he talks about the worry of our life, is when we shift our point of gravity. The reason why we worry is because we are not centered in Christ. So we are off balance. Right? We are, somehow we are not strong. So when we have worries, that means the center of gravity in Christ is shifted. So we're going to shift back. All right? The center of gravity is important. And we need to re relocate the center of our attention. Where is the center of our attention? Why are we worrying? Why do we have anxiety? All right? And then we need to change our priorities so that we can be stable. So we need to move from the many things to the one necessary thing. The many distractions, all right? many sand and pebbles, many things, many worries, and then move to the one necessary thing, the center of gravity. We need to shift back. We need to relocate back. We must always come back to the center of gravity. All right, so this is the first thing about our relationship with God. Huh? Jesus doesn't speak of, about a change of activities, a change of context, even a change of pace. When Jesus talked with disciples, he is not so concerned about con the people you mix with or even your activities, but the change of heart. Now, nah, that's the most difficult thing. Right? If our heart can be changed, if our heart can be fixed upon God, if we have the center of, if God is the center of our heart, the rest of it is no problem. All right? Very crucial. All right? So Jesus has set your heart on kingdom first. Set your heart on kingdom first. And all these things will fall into place. All right? So it's a heart issue. So spirituality, how spiritual I am or you are, it has to do with your heart issues. My heart, my devotion, my love for God, my affection for the Lord, my contact with God, the heart issues. All right? Set your heart and the kingdom first, the rest. You don't have to worry. All right? So when we worry, that means our heart is in the wrong place. Okay? When we have worry and anxiety, we have doubts, we have fears, that means our heart is not in the wrong place. It's in the wrong place. We don't have the center of gravity in our, in our lives, all right? And so we need to move our heart to the center where all other things will fall into place. So we go back to the center of gravity. We have to shift and make sure our center of gravity is in Christ, okay? All right. Luke 10, 41, this is what the Bible tells us. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. Sand, like pebbles. We are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Jesus is saying, your center of gravity, the most important thing, the, 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 the one thing is needed, Martha, you are worried about many things. One thing is NIV translation. Another translation, easy translation, one thing is important, Jesus said. Only one thing is important. Another translation, only one thing is essential. Many things are not necessary. Only one thing is essential. I think there's another translation. Is that, ah, only one thing is necessary, amplified version. All right, so Jesus told Martha, you are worried about so many things in life. In life, there are so many things to worry about, right? So many concerns, so many activities, but only one thing is needed. One thing is essential, important, and necessary. What is, this? What is the thing? Center. Jesus, the center of our life. All right, Luke 10, 41. Verse 42. 
the choices we make is quite crucial. Jesus said, Mary, the mother was worried, but Mary has chosen what is better. Right, verse 42. All right, another translation said, Mary has chosen what is right. He has chosen the right thing to sit at the feet of Jesus. All right, and chosen the good part. Martha was busy, but Mary chose the good part, and it will not be taken away from her. All right, so this is where the first point is. We must shift our center of gravity, make sure we choose the right part, the good part, and the most essential thing in our life. Once that is settled, the rest. Okay, now we're going to look at the story of priority. This is the English word priority. What is the meaning of priority? What does priority mean? <laughs> you know what it means? First things first. Priority. Okay? First priority, the most important. Now, the word priority comes from a, a, a Latin word, uh, prioritas. Okay? Uh, it means the most important thing, the, the prior thing, the prior thing, the first thing. Right? The most important. All right? Priority. Uh, when, when, the word, the, when the word was first coined, priority had no plural. It's singular. You don't have many priorities. There's only one priority. Okay? That's crucial, right? Important. All right. You could have only one priority. So, not that you have 10 to 15 priorities in life. Like we've got so many priorities in life. There's so many uh, things we want to do in life. Now, I'm not saying that we can't do a lot of things. As Jesus said, now you can, a lot of things. But you have only one priority in life. Only one thing is necessary. I want to nail that, nail that tonight. One thing is necessary. Now, the story of Martha and Mary. Now, you see this picture here. Huh? Uh, you look at this picture. Uh, you can see, isn't it? All right. Jesus, of course, this is Mary. Huh? And this is Martha. Martha is busy. Martha is angry. Martha is upset. <laughs> Martha told Jesus, why you never let my sister to help me? All right? So you can see these two sisters, they are good sisters. Oh, sorry. Uh, right. uh, uh, so these two sisters and, and Jesus, and this is a story of Martha and Mary. You've probably heard it many times. So we're going to look at this story of Martha and Mary. Verse 38. So Jesus and his disciples was on their way. He came to a village. This village is very important. Uh, where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. It was Martha. Martha was the one who invited Jesus. Martha has hospitality. Martha is an activist. Martha is always wanting people to come. Come to my house. I'll cook the best meal. Come, don't worry. Martha promised Jesus. Right? Come. So Martha was the one who opened home to him. All right. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. Martha invited Jesus, but Mary got the benefit. All right. So Mary, Mary is the one who sat at the, at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. Okay? Uh, verse 40, 40, 40, but Martha was distracted, remember, distracted by all the preparation that had to be made in the kitchen. Right? Invited Jesus, but she was busy. Sometimes our, our friends like that, come to my house, now. Come, 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 come to my house. Really busy in the kitchen, no time to talk. We're all busy doing a lot of things, but no time to really... Uh, listen to the person. So Martha was distracted by all the preparation that it had to be made. She came to Jesus and asked, Lord, don't you care? My poor guy saw that like, was upset now. Martha, <laughs> don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Poor me. Right, this is the problem. Tell her to help me. All right. So she complained to Jesus. Here was Mary doing nothing, wasting time <laughs> listening to you. But I'm the one working, Lord. Let me, uh, how can you let me work by myself? Tell her to help me. That was Martha and Mary. What did Jesus say? Martha, Martha. The Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. Did Jesus agree with Martha? He didn't. All right. But Few things are needed, indeed, only one. And Mary has chosen what is better, 
and it will not be taken away from us. And the story is short, precise, very powerful. All right, we're going to look at these two ladies at this time. All right, so Martha was a busy, active, task oriented person. Some of us are born at that level, we're task oriented, we're active, we are do, do gooders, and we are one, we are doing a lot of things. So, Mary by nature is task oriented, she's busy, 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 and very active. Okay, all right, so, so Martha is the busy one in the kitchen, cooking, hand, this is a modern Martha. Huh? Busy, we all many masters around. All right, all right. Always working, one. Always working. Nah, cannot sit still, one. See, let's go here and there. <laughs> cannot sit still. Somehow we have we have to walk on. We cannot sit still as the master spirit. All right, and and we, oh, the masters are like burnout. They are workaholics. Uh, they they do a lot of things. Do a lot of things until they, they lose their sleep la, They eat not have proper diet, etc. So 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 master. Uh, it's always doing good, but missing out the best. So nothing wrong with in the kitchen, right? Somebody got to cook, ma. right? So, so Martha was busy, but she missed out the best. What was the best? Sitting at the feet of Jesus. Right? She missed out the best, right? And then, don't be, don't know what is essential. Martha doesn't know what is essential. All right? She did a lot of activities. She thought she was serving Jesus. <laughs> She thought she was doing a lot of good deeds. Was Jesus interested in the kitchen world? Not at that time, lah. Maybe at other time. But at this time, Jesus came. She wanted Martha's attention. It is not sin, but priority. Okay, remember this. Huh? Working in the kitchen, busy is not sin, huh? Huh? Don't say that. Martha is no use. But it's priority. The most important. The most essential. That's priority. Okay. So distractions is a problem. Now with our social media, lots of distraction. Sometimes the WhatsApp, huh? so many WhatsApp groups that we have that we have to cancel, cancel, cancel. Otherwise, are you curious? Are you next one? Are you next one? Are you next one? Some a lot of it unnecessary one, no? Joke la, funny thing la, uh, la, la, busy body la. Uh, juicy news la. So a lot of distraction in social media, not only WhatsApp la, Facebook la, uh, and you name it la, Twitter, etc. So we have a lot of distractions. And then Martha has said, Lord, poor me. Poor, this is the problem. Poor me. And, and blame, blame Mary. Mary didn't, didn't offend her. Ma. Mary just sit at the feet of Jesus. Ma. Mary, la, she never helped me. <laughs> all right. So this is the problem. Martha. All right. A lot of Martha people in the world. All right. Now, what about Mary? Mary is a wise, passionate listener. All right? Mary sits at the feet of Jesus. She was wise. She had wisdom. She know uh, Jesus came. She listened. Okay? Uh, here is the, the listener, the attentive. Mary was attentive to Jesus. All right? Okay. Uh, she knows when to stop doing. Sit still and listen. Now, I think Mary and Martha were together in the kitchen. Before Jesus came. They were together. When Jesus came, Mary stopped working. Came to sit at the feet of Jesus. She knows when to stop doing, sit still and listen. All right. Mary had the discernment. Okay. Uh, and she, she's not lazy. She's not uh, selfish or inconsiderate. Okay, very important, Mary. You know the story of Mary. She's the one who loved Jesus. She's the one who booked the alabaster box of ointment. She's the one who had a compassion, passion for Jesus. So she's not selfish. She's not because uh, she don't want to work. On the way, get, uh, lazy, huh? Not lazy or self or inconsiderate to the sister. Actually, the two brothers, two sisters are very good friends. Uh, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. They are very good brothers and sisters. No problem with them. So, so Mary is a wise man. She's not a wise lady, and she values the master. All right. She she loves the master. Here is the master coming. So she values the master and she's willing to let go of all the distraction and focus on the master. Now, very important in this story. Yeah? All right. So there are many things that may distract us, the kitchen work, la, our responsibility, la, and a thousand and one things. Just now when you were meditating, didn't you? Your mind go to all around the world. <laughs> very hard to think nothing, isn't it? How to think nothing? Oh, I tell you this meditation. Huh? Now I'm learning to sit down quietly. Huh? It's a struggle at first. Oh. Took me a few years. Oh. 
to really focus, uh, really think of one thing only. Uh, cause, oh, think of work, la, think of this, la, think of food, la, think of responsibility, la, my children. La, and, oh, right? So there are a lot of restrictions in life. Our, our mind is made, we call that monkey mind. Our mind is made, there are so many thousands of thoughts flow into our mind. Right? It's a distraction. So he said, we will let go of all the distraction and focus on the master. I'm talking about focus on Jesus. I'm talking about, about this priority, focus on Jesus, the center of gravity of our life, okay? It's very important. So, so Mary was a it's full attentiveness in a loving way. Full attention. She was, she was sitting down and looking at Jesus. She was attentive at Jesus, all right? Full attentiveness, all right? And, and sit silently to listen every word of Jesus. So sitting down there, I wish I can show you the picture. She was sitting down there and just listen to every word of Jesus. She was there, full attention, silent. Huh? She didn't ask questions. She didn't pray to Jesus. She didn't quarrel with Jesus. She just sit down and listen. Ah, that's the tough thing to be a good listener. But she was there, all right? And, and Jesus doesn't come to her house every day. It is very important. All right? Jesus only came that day. And after that, he chabot already. He left somewhere. So when Jesus come to your house, what are you going to do? Hey, don't go and do this. La. I'm going to do internet, la. check my email, la. feed my dog, la. my cat, la. my pigeon. La. Don't do uh, clean my house. La. When Jesus come to your house, la. hey, throw away everything, right? You better be merry, all right? She, she knows that Jesus came and Jesus come, you better sit at Jesus' feet, right? And he values his teaching and treasure his truth. So, so Mary loved the, the truth, Jesus' words of life. I'm sure if Jesus come to church today, huh? I don't know how many of you will come to church. Huh? We want to listen to Jesus' words, huh? words of life, words of power, words of healing. And, and we want to hear truth. So, so, so here was Jesus in town, in my house. So Mary just came, rushed, and listened to Jesus. Everything throw away. Ah, that's what we mean by priority. So it's very powerful, Mary. And Martha, all right? Uh, so, now I'm not saying Martha is not important. And Mary is more important. Usually there's both and now. Uh, both and. It's not either we become Martha or Mary. Very often we should be both. Uh, we, should, we need Ma Martha and Mary in the house. Somebody must do kitchen work. Uh, somebody get ready. Uh, I'm not saying we don't need Martha, all right? But uh, uh, not one without the other. We need the balance. Uh. We, need, we need the Marthas in the church as well as the Mary. We need people to work as well as people who listen. But, but, the big but there, right? The big but here is, you have action, but no contemplation. No use. What I mean is, when you're doing a lot of things for Jesus, a lot of work, etc., but we don't sit down and contemplate and listen to God and know His will, our activities are useless, Right? If you're just like martyr, distracted, Jesus was not happy with her, right? So, action, but no contemplation, is no use. But you have, oh, how does it go? But you, you have contemplation, but no action is no use. There are a lot of people who want to sit at the feet of Jesus and don't, don't want to do anything. <laughs> Listen, happy, praise God. A lot of knowledge, etc. But if you don't have action, it's no use, right? You need to go and minister, all right? So we're not saying either or. We need contemplation before action. You need to sit down, Jesus' feet, and then to know what He wants us to do. Ever since this contemplating thing, com contemplation for us, we are, we are beginning to sit down and, and not do much things like before. <laughs> The, the many years of our ministry, we are doing a lot of things, organizing program after program, and guest speaker, etc., etc., etc. Right now, we don't want to do a lot of things. We want to hear first what does God want us to do, contemplation, and then do only the thing that Jesus wants us to do. I think there's more fruitful, all right? Uh, the most important thing, we need contemplation and action, of course. We need to not only contemplate and listen to God, meditate, but we need to also act out. Whatever it tells us. So the story of Martha and Mary is about priority. All right? The most important thing, when Jesus comes in, let's sit at the feet of Jesus. Now, 
So when, when, when Jesus comes, we, 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 we need to make a choice when Jesus comes to our house. We either sit at the feet of Jesus or busy with kitchen work. What, what will you choose? <laughs> what will you choose? Busy with the kitchen work or sit at the feet of Jesus? Okay, we're going to make a choice. Like Joshua told the people of Israel, choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So we're going to make a choice. A lot of priorities, so to speak. A lot of things you want to do. Our family, our finances, our faith, our fitness, all the F we can think about. Our friends, our work, we have a lot of things. Choose you this day. Choose you. We make a choice. As for me and my house, Joshua said, we will serve the Lord. Our priority is the Lord. Our priority is the kingdom. Okay, you make make choice, very important. Now, look at this, this, this thing. The good is the enemy of the best. What does it mean? There are many good things in life that is not the best, right? A lot of things are good, right? Social is good. Hobby is good. Exercise is good. A, a lot of things can be good, but may not be the best that God wants us to do at that point. All right, so it's very important. A lot of good things that we can do, a lot of things, but may not be the best what God wants us to do. Now, this is a story of the transfiguration. You remember the transfiguration? Peter, James, and John, Jesus went up to the mountain, right? In Matthew 17. And suddenly, Jesus was transformed. Glory of God came upon. Peter, James, and John saw the glory of God, and then they saw... Moses and Elijah up on the mountain. The glory of God came down. And they saw Peter, James, and John. They were asleep and they woke up. They saw Peter, James, and John and Jesus talking with them. No, sorry. Moses, Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. And Peter and they were there. Peter, James, and John. Okay. And then as they saw the, the glory of God, suddenly a cloud came. And they fell down. Peter, James, and then they were slain in the power. And the cloud cloud gathered there, and then when they woke up, Jesus got them out of the cloud from, from the, on the floor. They only finally saw Jesus. They only finally saw no one but Jesus. This is what uh, Peter, James, and John said, good, good that we are here. We want to build altar. One for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for you. Okay? Now, who is Moses and who is Elijah? The two great men of God. Moses was the lawgiver. Elijah was the powerful prophet. So, so Peter James and John said, I want to build three altars, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for Jesus. The cloud came and overshadowed them, and finally when they woke up, they saw nobody except Jesus. They said, it's good, but not the best. Right? We, we don't need to build an altar to Moses, an altar for Elijah. We only want Jesus. All right. The priority is Jesus. All right. So the good is the enemy of the best. The best is Jesus. You cannot compare Elijah and Moses with Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God. He is the glory of God. A lot of times, we, our perspective can be wrong. All right. Philippians 1, 20, 21, 23. To live for me, to live is Christ. To die is gain. To live or to die. What is your choice? To live or to die. What are you going to do? All right, this is what Paul said. I eagerly expect and hope. Now as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. All right? Paul is saying, I, I want Christ exalted in my body, whether die or live. I want Christ to be exalted. Okay? Uh, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. But if he has to choose, what did Paul say? If I am to go on living in a body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I don't know. <laughs> Paul is saying, I, 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 I want to be here with you, but I want to be with Christ. It's better. I have to choose. It's a very hard choice. There a lot of times in our life we have to choose. What is God telling us? Your choice is very important. <laughs> we are also in the verse of choosing. Paul said, I, I am torn between the two. I desire to, to depart and to be with Christ. It's far better. But I have to stay for the sake of the Philippines. This has been our dilemma at this point of our life. 
we have to choose whether to stay in Malacca or go somewhere else. And it's a, it's a torn road. What do you want us to do? I, I desire to be here, but I want to be there. But we have to make a decision in our life. All of us, we have to make choices in our devotion with the Lord. Okay? It's very important. Thirdly, I, I want to not only shift our sense of gravity, story of Martha and Mary. Third, finally, you need to schedule dedicated time for prayer and reflection. If you don't schedule time for prayer and reflection, I guarantee you, our life will be full of distractions. End of the day, we'll be too tired, too busy. We won't have time to be with Jesus. So that is the challenge for us. Matthew 6, 6, but when you pray, go into your room. Actually, NASB says, go into your inner room. Where's the inner room? All right. Of course, they were talking about the, the room at that time, the closet. All right. Uh, close the door of the room and, and, and pray to your father who is unseen or in, in secret, King James Version. Then your father who sees what is done in secret, he will reward you. So this one, one type of prayer is between you and God. Go to the room, close the door in secret and between you and God. Now, this is a prayer we're talking about. You need to develop this prayer. All right? You need to schedule time with God. We need to establish daily spiritual routines for spiritual growth. Okay? Uh, deep spirituality means we want to grow. Okay? We want to grow. We want to develop spiritually. So you need to schedule time. You don't, have, you don't schedule your time, you will not have time. All right? So you need to have time to sit at the feet of Jesus, time to meditate, time to be away from everybody and just sit in the presence of the Lord. You want to schedule the time. All right? So you've got to establish daily spiritual routine. Uh, early morning prayer is what I suggest. Early morning prayer. <laughs> uh, I think even the Muslims do that. Hindus do that. The early morning they'll pray. So early morning prayer is, 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 is a, when you're freshest, you wake up, we seek the Lord, right? Those were the days when I became a Christian, maybe 30, 40, 50 years ago. Early quiet time. Before I go to school, uh, I was taught by my disciple, make, disciple. He said, get up early, have quiet time before you go to school. I think it was 5.30 a.m. Uh, uh, 6 a.m. during school. 6 a.m. before I go to school, I get up early to do my quiet time, read my Bible and go to school. But right now, during MCO, wow, praise God, 5.30. During MCO time, about two, three years ago. That was a good time. I developed this habit of early morning prayers. All right, 5.30. So now automatically, automatically 5.30, I'll get up. I don't know. I never set my alarm clock. Uh, the body somehow will wake up 5.30, sometimes early or so. All right. I will get up. I'll be excited. Uh, and, and one of the beautiful things is God's presence is there. You get up, you're very excited because you want to meet the Lord. All right. So this is the early morning prayers. Uh, first thing in the morning, if possible, first thing in the morning, you get up is with God. Your number one priority, all right? And the last thing at night, if possible, before you go to sleep, now that's the hard one, I, I, very difficult for me, even now. The, the last thing before I, I sleep, uh, to have time with God, oh, by the time I knock out, I sleep really. But it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a discipline. First thing in the morning and last thing before you sleep. You give account to God and you, you, you wait upon the Lord. But really, you've got to schedule time. I would suggest first thing in the morning. So the big rocks is what? Jesus. Jesus' presence. All right, I'm talking about Jesus' presence as the big rock, our first love for Jesus, our number one priority in our life. Amen? Amen? Anybody wants to debate with me? <laughs> the most important thing in our life is the pearl of great price, is the number one priority, is the love for Jesus. So this is the biggest rocks of all the rocks. You must put this rock first, then other rocks, family, la, then our finances, la, our health, etc. So I'm talking about the, the first big rock. The, the, ten come, the first of the ten commandments, you should have no other gods before me, right? God said, well, you know other gods before me. This is the only, the, the, the most important, you must have got the first. God must be first in your life. No other gods or idols. All right. That's what the Bible tells us. You cannot love God and mammon. Money, time. The money is the, the, very often money and whatever it is. It, it distracts us. 
many people worship money. Business, money, priority. I don't care. It's, it's money. Jesus, you must love God. Or oh, mammon. You cannot love God or mammon. It's the same time. You either love one or hate the other. All right. So here is the presence of the Lord. You, you, you must choose. So Lord Jesus must be my top priority in life. My top most priority. All right? Top most priority. All right. Keep the Sabbath. I want to just share a little bit about what, what does it mean keep the Sabbath? That one of the ten commands. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall work. On the, on the Sabbath day you shall rest. All right. So I, the, the Sabbath principle is, is honoring the Lord is really priority in God. What I mean by that is in, in the Jewish life, it revolves around Sabbath, Sabbath keeping. You read the Old Testament. They are very concerned about the Sabbath. All right. Uh, it's, it's that once a day they have to stop working they will go to the I know, synagogue or the temple same like the Muslims right Muslim Friday the moment they, where they go on Friday is, is uh, whatever it is uh, even they go overseas uh, Friday they go and pray even on the roads they will pray wow, what a dedication somehow they keep their, their whatever Sabbath for them for the Jews it's a Saturday it's a Sabbath day. Yeah? They honor the Sabbath. But the problem with the Jews, they overdo it. They over honor the Sabbath. I think they want to worship the Sabbath. Sabbath is so important. Even they're angry with Jesus because they said Jesus broke the Sabbath. <laughs> Jesus was a Sabbath breaker. He healed the sick during the Sabbath. He asked the guy, take up your bed and go. You're not supposed to carry things during the Sabbath. It's work. And a lot of things. The, the Jews want to kill Jesus because Jesus broke the Sabbath. To them, huh? so I'm not saying you will be religious. All right? Don't be the over zealous over the Sabbath. But honor the Sabbath in a sense, the old American religion value is Sunday is the Sabbath day. For them, all the time, you remember the Little House on the Prairie uh, uh, movies, a lot of American, they, they, on a Sunday is go to church. All right? When we went to New Zealand in 1996, uh, we, the shops in New Zealand closed on sa- Sunday. Saturday, Sunday, they close because they go to church. Until the Chinese come, New Zealand. Chinese work six, seven days. Oh, the Masai say this Chinese working, this Korean working, the Japanese oh, better work. Like, otherwise, no, no, no business. So, but the, the traditional value, everybody go to church. It's a Sabbath day. It's a day of worship. Their life revolve around Sabbath. Okay? In that sense, it's very crucial. All right? Uh, In, in a sense, I, I, I want us to think about the Sabbath as a day of, of honor God, of worship. Now, in our days when we were new Christian, now, we never miss church. Man. We go to church, it's, it's a Sunday, wherever we go is church. But nowadays it's different. <laughs> we have other priorities. Ah, see first, lah. see how. Lah. Oh, yo, this one come la. My relative come la. My friend come la. My holiday. No, those days, uh, I'm not trying to judge anybody. Uh, but the, 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 the revolving around the house of God is not there. Okay? But we don't honor the Sabbath. We don't honor the day of worship. Now, I want to go beyond the Old Testament. All right? Old Testament. Now, X, the New Testament. X2. Day by day, they will continue one mind in the temple. House to house, breaking bread. They were taking their meals together and they were praising God, having favor with other people. They were doing every day, of course, revival. Power of the Holy Spirit came. Now, eating together is very biblical. What we're going to do after this in a few minutes' time, eating together is the early church time. They broke bread, they ate together because that's where we have fellowship. Right. The early church uh, broke the Sabbath. They don't care about the Sabbath. They went on on a Sunday, of course. And every day they were worshipping the Lord. Uh, it is a daily thing. Now, uh, New Testament worship, okay, very important. I mean, just try and finish is very important. It, it is, it's worshiping in spirit and in truth. Okay? I, I want to put some kind of balance. I don't want us to be legalism minded so that we, we miss church, we feel guilty. La. Pastor angry with me, la. I don't go to church. La. No, it's not so much as coming to physical church, okay? Uh, but our house, our, 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 our life, we revolve around the Sabbath, honoring God. The idea of a Sabbath is honoring God. New Testament worship, all right? Uh, the Samaritan woman in, in John 4. Remember the Samaritan woman here was Jesus at the well, Samaritan woman there. And then in a long story, cut short, 
uh, uh, Samaritan woman said, my, our father said, this is the place of worship. No, no, Jesus said, the Jews said, no, it's in Jerusalem. Here is the second most holy place. I think Saika was there. So the Samaritan woman had, having a discussion with Jesus. said, we will come and worship here, but Jesus, no, no, the Jews, Jerusalem is a more holy place. So there was a story here, the Samaritan woman, okay? But Jesus is telling them, you worship God in spirit. It's not the place, not the time. Okay? It's a heart. Even if you're not in church physically, wherever you go, you must worship God. Huh? Find a church you know, on holiday. Like the two Singaporeans came last, last Saturday, huh? or previous Saturday. They are on holiday, but they came to church because they felt their, 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 their center of gravity is the presence of God. All right? So here was worshiping God in spirit, not the place, nor the day. It's not so much. Jesus told them, God is spirit, and His worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. So it's not a place, not a time even. But if you can come, if this is a day of worship, then you come. But when you're traveling, you do everything, then you must also carry the presence of the Lord. You must honor the Lord wherever you go, okay? Uh, so it is the presence of God when we're talking about the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the presence of God, all right? Keep that in mind. The church can be anywhere, anytime. You can be at home, two or three are gathered in your home, you pray. That's church, all right? But keep the center of the presence of the Lord in our life very important. In the last day, maybe the church will be closed down. We cannot worship God, but you can worship God in the house, in the family. Right? The New Testament worship in spirit and in truth. All right. When two or three are gathered in my name, Jesus' presence will come. In the house, in the office, the neighborhood, when you gather together in Jesus' name, that's church. But honor the Lord at least once a week. Keep the Sabbath once a week. Set aside to worship God. Number one priority, worship God. The rest of the things are secondary. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into the closet. When thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and the Father which sees in secret will reward you openly. So it is your personal prayer life. Centering prayer is your personal prayer life. Not in the church, not in public prayer, not interested. Your personal, private prayer life. You close the door, close the door, close it, shut the door, and pray the Father in secret. It's a secret place of prayer. Secret time, maybe. Even your time is between you and God. Find the best time where you and God alone, nobody disturb you, distract you, is you and God. Now, in those days when I was a kid, I got no place to pray. I see with my brothers, four brothers, four boys in the same room. And the only place I can have quiet time is outside my house on the swing in the middle of the night, in the morning. So I have to go to my closet and close the door between me and God. You need that secret place. That's what it means by deeper spirituality. All right? Where you have stillness and silence and solitude, three things. You are still, you don't walk around, you are not... Uh, uh, cannot keep still always on the internet, handphone, 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 even service, handphone. It's there, we are addicted to our handphone. We, are, we, are, we cannot keep still, our mind cannot focus on, on God. We are always in our social media. All right. Stillness, to keep still and silence. Oh man, tough to be silent. Mind, silence and solitude. Solitude means by yourself, lah. don't bring wife children together is you and God is between you and God right I added simplicity later on I'll talk about simplicity later on right? so my daily 20 minute morning prayer has changed me that 20 minutes since MCO days of just sitting down uh, no talking at all me and God alone and for 20 minutes develop the habit of just quiet in the presence of the Lord and just have one central word maybe love or Jesus or one word just one word only the rest of it empty it's empty and just quiet in the presence of the Lord and He brings healing cleansing He uh, a lot of things doesn't happen during that 20 minutes but after that once the practice is there you develop that the presence of God I tell you it's so exciting. Every morning when I get up, I felt, feel the presence of the Lord. I'm so excited to, to meet with Jesus. Never in my life, all these years in the ministry, that I get up early, I want to look to Jesus only. I want to be with my Jesus. That's that powerful, deeper relationship that I, hopefully we will 
lead you into it. A ten minute of silent prayer is only a taste just now, a small taste. We'll try and do a few later on next time. Okay? So the challenge here is how to prioritize our relationship with God. Shift your center of gravity. Your center of gravity is Jesus. It's Jesus. Jesus must be first place in your life. You must love Jesus with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength on your mind. You must have Jesus inside as the center of your life. Revolve everything around Jesus. Other things are all secondary. All right? Shift your priority, your heart. Your heart, the point of gravity is your heart with Jesus. Number two is the story of Martha is your choice. I cannot force you. I cannot command you. I cannot go to your house and say, get up, get up. It's your choice. You're old enough. All right. With or without a pastor, you should get up in the morning on your own, right? You must choose. You must choose to follow Jesus. And finally, third thing, you must schedule time and practice. Practice means sit down quietly. <laughs> Our mind, still, silence, solitude. You've got to practice. You know, practice every day. Yeah, practice, practice. Slowly, 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 slowly. Wow, you're going to enjoy the presence of the Lord. It becomes a second nature. So that's the challenge. That's the challenge that each one of us must have. Prioritizing our life with God. When we go deeper in life, is to put priority as the most important thing in our life. 